All right, so at this point, we've done all of the forming to get the pauldron on the right side of the dragon wing fin thing to fit. We've checked range of motion. The biggest limitation, of course, is lifting the arm up above the head. And so that's put more spread to this section of the wing, sort of the mid range. And then these little swooping details um, get in the way when you're doing complex things like reaching behind the shoulder to the back. But that's the only place where we're really limited. Uh, figuring out how this sweep is going to meet with the other sweep may create a new constraint, but at this point we're ready to paint. So what I'm going to do is mix some of the silver paint, which is the base coat for the wing, and the violet to make our initial color. Right, so we've got silver, and we've got violet. And then from there, uh, we're going to paint basically the lightest regions to the darkest regions, because the darkest regions are always the hardest to cover up. So just adding our silver, like so, and then some violet as well. And then we're just going to mix it with the chip brush that we're using to apply the uniform coating of paint. So if it's hot out, the paint will dry quickly. And if it's cold or your leather is still wet, the paint, will, the paint will take a lot longer to dry. So we're just trying to sweep it on liberally to get a nice first coat, leaving the idea, the impression of where the bones are uh, unpainted so we can get that with just the dark paint. But for these regions that have the, the really narrow web spaces, we want to get in there thoroughly. So we're just going to paint over the whole thing so we get a nice uniform coating. It doesn't take that long. The trick here is you want to make sure that you get all of the details on the first go so you're not coming back trying to touch up with your pre-mixed color or your custom mixed color after the fact because it's very hard to match that sheen just right and then it's also getting followed up with a wash so I'm making sure to get nice uniform coating throughout the surfaces and this one is so slow that we won't even need to time lapse it but then there'll be a cut too when we do the detail work with the dark purple across this shape and what it looks like to do that in real time and most likely with a time lapse. So again, just make sure you get all those little details, the undersides, and don't be afraid to flip your material and check and see if there's any nooks or crannies you maybe missed. Um, one line of sight is never going to give you all the information. So if you rotate your material around, you may find that there are spots you missed at the very tips or the edges little subtle indications. So go back, check everything, and just give those light areas, right? Remember, if, if the web space were to be darker, that would actually be the last thing to get painted. And we would do the boning first, but we're painting our lightest to darkest. And then conversely, we're also painting from the high spots to the low spots. Um, so we want to get all the low spots first, and then as the high spots come up, um, they're easier to paint just because they're not in embedded nooks and crannies. So I'm just going across the edge of the wingtips, making sure that the purple covers everything with this premixed color. So that when we come back, there's only the lightest amount of touch-up. that should be it and we'll go back to our original orientation like so so at this point what we've done is we've painted all of our base coat for the web space of the wings and what we need to do now is flip it over and fill all these really fine contours of the folds with paint. 
So we're going to cover that and techniques to get into these little nooks and crannies that are just a little trickier before we come back and we do the detail work. So what will happen is we're going to cover this whole region. We're going to let it dry. I'll probably switch to time lapse once I'm done explaining. And then uh, there'll be another cut to how we do the detail work on these large sweeping fins. So I always prefer the little blue gloves, especially for the, um, the crease work, just because it's hard to get in there and not get paint on yourself. So we've got our temporary container. And I'm always very liberal with the amount of paint I'm going to use on the rough side of the leather just because it soaks up so much paint. And we're using just a one inch chip brush here. right? So with the one inch chip brush, uh, it gets into most of the crannies, but it also allows you to really um, get a lot of surface area coverage. So I'm starting with one of the easier ones just to show how you can wedge your chip brush without worrying about ruining the bristles. You can wedge it right into those detail spots. And we want to make sure that we start and get all the webs first, and then we'll hit the high spots, uh, which are a little bit easier. And so with this really tight curve, I'm not going to be able to push straight in with my brush. So I'm going to start at the tip of it and then use the width of the brush head to squeeze in there. But it's really hard to do, and so you want to do this very early while you still have a lot of paint available in, in your container. Right. And so now I can pry it open with my thumb and get that last detail work, but you got to go slow. And then this is the trick, right? If you have any drips from coming by, right, this is going to be this tip region here. It's going to be part that's painted anyway. But you want to sweep that off so it doesn't drip onto all of your other hard work. So I'm catching all that excess paint that, that comes from getting it into those deep valleys. I'm dispersing it elsewhere so I don't have to deal with the drips. Right, so that's why you want to hit those troughs first and not worry so much about the remainder. And so I leave these big wide swaths so that when I'm painting I can get some of the excess paint off my glove so I can handle the rest of my piece. But these little troughs can be very tricky to fill, but it's necessary because you're not going to be able to clean them when you're done. There's no way to really get in there if it starts to mold to um, really patch it. So it's important to get there first. I know it's counterintuitive, but you want to start with the hard stuff in the beginning, so that way everything else um, happens a little bit easier. It's easier to keep track of, see where you're going, figure out what you're doing. And so then we have this other tight curve here. And you, you really don't want to force it when you get to the tip, otherwise you're going to spray paint everywhere. So. Once you get to the tip of your, your trough, whichever area you're trying to fill, you want to make sure that you're going very slow at the end so you don't fling paint everywhere and end up having to repaint part of your design because you were in too much of a rush. So uh, going slower is faster in this case. And I'm just going to keep running my brush through these areas to make sure that if I think I missed anywhere. I've got total coverage. And then we'll get this last trough. There we go. So now that we've got everything full, you can see that there's some of the paint oozing out the sides. That might be too much, so I'm going to try and sweep that out. Because you don't want the paint to glue it shut. You want it to be able to breathe. Just running my chip brush through those troughs one last time to make sure that there's total coverage, but not a massive excess. Okay. And you can see how much purple 
has been used already. It's, it's gone through a lot very quickly. And it will probably draw the rest of it very easily into these web spaces on the textured side. We'll need to add more. But for that initial part, we had enough. And that's really when you don't want to have to try and pour. It's when you're doing everything all at once, trying to keep track of all the drips and the excess. So at this point, it's one of those things where you learn to grab with your palm. So let me just show that again. So what I've done, my palm is still clear, and I've just placed the paint in my palm to unscrew the cap. And that keeps one hand clean for doing things that you hadn't anticipated. And then it keeps one hand messy for all the stuff you need to touch, but don't necessarily want to deal with. Okay, so that's really everything you need to see. Now I'm just going to switch to time lapse. And what we'll do is just finish covering all of the purple. So once you've finished painting your final piece, the one thing you want to be aware of here is it's got to dry, right? And so just leave it in an orientation you don't need to disturb. But I flipped it around 180 degrees to make sure that I could see the light coming in from one side versus the other, and then determine if there was any spots that I missed. But the only reason why we're breaking for video is to show you how to doff your gloves without getting paint everywhere. So the biggest trick here is to figure out, uh, you've got to pull your gloves off, you don't want to get paint everywhere. And the way to do this, at least in Ochem, the way they taught me, is to pull at the wrist, fully encapsulate the fingertips of your glove. And then with that, grab the full glove in the palm of your gloved hand, and then pull the wrist off, and dock the glove with your second hand. So everything is contained within your gloves. And then you can work paint-free, no mess. 